TV stars Naga Manchetti and Vicky Patterson have told MPs that health services, health service staff need to take women's health problems more seriously. The pair told the Women and Equalities Committee uh, of the challenges that they face trying to obtain diagnosis and treatment for their menstrual and gynaecological issues. TV presenter Naga, who has adenomyosis said that she had been told to suck it up since she was a teenager despite suffering with pain and uh, once forced her husband to even call an ambulance she didn't the pain forced her husband to call an ambulance take a look at what she had to say i would throw up on the first day at least once or twice um i would pass out at least once or twice i'd be wrapped around a toilet and i would still go to school and i was very good at school <laughs> you know very academic and musical um, and that lasted for the whole of my life. And I, whenever I went to the doctor, I was told it was normal. Meanwhile, I'm a celebrity winner. Vicky, who has premenstrual dysphoric disorder, said that she was left with crippling anxiety and made to feel stupid and ashamed. The cost for me has always come at the quality of my life. Mm. You know, 10 days where you just don't want to get off the sofa, yeah. you know, where you can't bring yourself to talk to anybody, where you feel like the world would be a better place without you in it. So that's, and you know, listening to Naga talk about how she dealt with this when she was younger, I was so old when I realised what was going on with me, you know? Like I was in my 30s. I've had messages from lasses, women telling me their daughters are 17 and they're, they're fighting to get diagnosed. The Department of Health has said that hundreds of thousands of women have already directly benefited from its women's health strategy launched last year. But I suppose I'll start with you, Esther, as our, our female on the panel. What do you think when you hear this? I mean, obviously, it's horrible. Um, and you, you, you kind of lose faith in the people that are supposed to take care of your health when you hear stories like this about people not being taken seriously. I remember a similar campaign in France, actually, not too long ago. I think it was a couple of years ago where women... Um, basically launched a campaign because they felt that actually a lot of gynecologists in France told them this, a similar thing, suck it up, you're being dramatic, um, there's nothing wrong with you. Um, and obviously France doesn't have an NHS that has a different sort of healthcare model. So I, I don't know how much this is because the NHS has an institutionally sexist model as opposed to there being um, unfit medics working within the NHS that are more difficult to get rid of. So for me personally, I had a um, a colposcopy, which is you have it after a smear test where they find abnormal cells in your cervix. And the first time I had it done, I was I actually had a male perform um, the colposcopy and he was basically shouting at me, telling me, oh, you know, open your legs, you're being dramatic. Like, he was literally shouting at me and I had the, the female nurse, you know, trying to calm me down. She looked she looked like she felt quite sorry for me. Um, but after that, I didn't go again, even though I had to well, go again. Well, because it's a stressful Exactly. And I, and I spoke, so I kept getting letters from my, my local GP. And so eventually I went back and the nurse, I told the nurse my experience and she said, you should have reported him. I know it's a bit... Um, a bit of a lengthy process, but you should have said something. And why didn't you, you report them at the time? Because it was such a horrible experience. I mean, it's, it's an intimate issue, like, you know, you it's a cervical exam, it. exactly. And I was, I just didn't want anyone near me. And it was the first time I had that as well. Um, but the, the reality is I was reassured by a lot of other NHS staff, mainly women as well, who, who said my experience shouldn't, isn't universal, shouldn't have happened and all of that. So I actually don't think it's a, an institutional issue. I think it's more, there are, you know, unfit medics within the NHS that the institution should take more seriously about reprimanding. Well, I suppose there's a difference Difficult when you look at it. I mean, is it unfit medics and there's only a few, or is there many, which makes it more institutional? Because there are so many women suffering, it would appear mm. that it starts to feel a bit more institutional. I mean, first of all, that what a horrible experience yeah. for you to go through. I, I'd suggest that the fact that that could happen and and you didn't feel able to uh, report, you know, professional. I didn't even know the process. I didn't know there was a process. Yeah, the fact that the the female nurse sounded uncomfortable, and that you hear so many examples like the one you just described, suggests to me that it's there on an institutional level. That these men and and the doctors and the experts are far more likely to be men, often older men, to get to a job like that, and they're in a position where they don't feel like they have to listen to women, where they have attitudes that are out of date with the ones that a lot of women would expect. And if you have a system that lets them keep doing that, that doesn't retrain them, that doesn't have consequences for serious mistakes or, or inappropriate ways of dealing with female patients, I think that says it's an institutional issue. It, it, it's interesting that you see male doctors because actually I'm not I'm not even sure whether it's like just I don't even know you could just request a female one. 
I think you can. I didn't, but I didn't but know I, that. <laughs> but, it, but I don't know whether we can just put this at the feet of the male doctors, yeah. um, whether this is, is it's more universal than that. But someone that would be good to talk to now is uh, GP Ellie Cannon. Dr Ellie, do you think the NHS is sexist? And if it is, is it just the male doctors to blame? Well, I think that we know, sadly, that actually healthcare services are sexist. I don't want this just labelled as, as purely the NHS. Um, so, in fact, the issue is, unfortunately, healthcare. And that starts right at the beginning. When we do research about medical problems, uh, we tend to recruit patients who are white men um, for research. So very little research is done on women, very little research particularly is done on women of colour. So generally, even right from the start, before we've even got a patient in a room, um, women are on the back foot. And then there are sort of lots of other attitudinal issues that you've you've sort of mentioned. So something like period pain, for example, is often seen by male and female healthcare professionals as something normal. And this is why women get sort of delayed diagnosis um, with endometriosis. And that's sort of a societal issue. Um, so there's lots of sort of all these different attitudes, really. I don't think we can just blame men, as you've said. I think it also comes from sort of women and men, um, healthcare professionals. There's lots and lots of different layers, but the evidence certainly points to the fact that women get a worse deal um, in terms of healthcare. Ellie, what would you suggest to a, a female patient that felt that maybe they were being ignored by the health service? So my advice would really be that, first of all, as you've mentioned, the healthcare service isn't a homogenous system. It's very patchwork. Um, so you can have sort of one doctor with one attitude in a room next to another doctor with a different attitude. It's always worth asking for a second opinion. Uh, whether that's in the same healthcare facility or in a different one, you are entitled to that on the NHS. That's incredibly important for everybody to know. And the other thing I'd say is that knowledge is power. We have fantastic women's health charities, women's health support groups out there um, who offer advice so you can look up your condition, you can understand about your condition, so you can go in totally informed with all the knowledge that you need to ask for what you need. It's also worth saying actually because it's the first time I had heard of adenomyosis which is to do with the cell linings um, that shouldn't be there actually embedded in the, the womb. I'm not describing that well but thankfully the NHS does have an independent page on that now so if you're concerned about that you can read up on it on your own. It's slightly different to endometriosis um, which I think is more commonly spoken about. Uh, Simone from Essex, we're going to go to the calls now. Ellie stay with us. Simone, what's your thoughts on this? Do you think the NHS is sexist? Yeah, I think I agree with the um, lady that was just speaking there. I don't think okay. it's necessarily um, women, G uh, sorry, male GPs. My GP was female. Mm. Um, from the age of 13 to my late 30s, I suffered with excruciating period pains. I'd lost jobs over it. Um, I was vomiting. Um, I couldn't walk. I couldn't get into work. It was so bad and I ended up paying a private gynecologist to um, tell me what was wrong and he diagnosed me with endometriosis, polycystic, polycystic ovaries and fibroids and it was so severe that when I was like, when he said you need to have an operation, I was like, okay, well, can we have it done in the new year because, you know, I've got work, I've got deadlines and he was like, no, you need to have this surgery within the next two weeks. That's how bad it was. Well, and that must but have been I really spent painful. Over twenty years suffering with my GP telling me that it was just normal. And, and you're and not I the thought... first person. Also, Vicky and Naga have both said that they had to go private in order to find some sort of diagnosis. Doctor Ellie, what needs to be done? I mean, Simone's story is unfortunately not rare. It would seem. What do we need to do to improve the NHS to stop this sort of thing happening? Because not everybody has the money to go private. No, I think that's right. And endometriosis particularly is, is very, very difficult. We know it takes on average seven years for a woman um, to get diagnosed with endometriosis. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And one of the reasons 
um, which is something that we can't change at the moment is because it is difficult to diagnose. And actually, in order to diagnose it, women actually have to have an operation, something called a laparoscopy. Um, and obviously, that adds an extra block. It's not a simple blood test or a simple x-ray that we would normally use. But very much this goes back to what I said about the attitude. And this is from women and from when that period pain is normal. Or we saw when we saw the Ockenden report into um, maternity health care, women are told certain things in labour are normal when they're actually not. It's not normal to have period pain that stops you going to work or stops you living your life or having a relationship or doing what you're supposed to do. And healthcare professionals have to understand and appreciate that that's the case. Someone, just very quickly, I want to read some messages here, but did the operation help? Are you feeling better now? Someone? Going private. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. so the operation helped. I'm still going private for my checkups. Um, but I also want to add that I think my race played a part in it. I think I was dismissed because often... Um, you know, black, they think black women have a higher pain threshold and it's just not true. You know, if, if you have to prescribe me tramadol, that tells you how excruciating the pain is. Mm. I'm not making this up. No, no, so, yeah. Simone, and, and you're also, uh, you, you know, you're not far off the mark. I mean, we've seen it in maternity. That's the only one I'm really aware of, Dr. Ellie, but you might be able to enlighten me further, where race definitely plays a part in, in it would appear, treatment. Yes, I'm sorry to say that is the case. And um, we know, as I mentioned earlier, that women of colour are really poorly represented in terms of research, in terms of drug trials, in terms of advocacy. Um, and this is something that really has to change. And there are um, long held sort of beliefs about people's culture or pain threshold, as Simone has mentioned, which are absolutely false. Um, and there is, unfortunately, prejudice, sexism, racism, within the healthcare system across the board. I don't think this is an NHS issue. I think, unfortunately, this is a national, if not a global issue. Simone, I'm so sad to hear about the pain that you've suffered, but I, I'm really glad that things are looking up and you are being seen regularly. Thank you very much for your call. Just a few messages. Michelle on Twitter says, if men suffered like this every month, there have been a cure for every gynaecological issue. Decades ago, GPs, both male and female, are dismissive and women really have to fight for issues to be investigated. Jackie on face Facebook says, I was going through menopause. There's another one that seems to be misdiagnosed quite often and had an undiagnosed underactive thyroid condition and basically went through a year of hell before they started listening. The other thing that I had read, it read Dr. Ellie, is because women have very different hormonal compositions that they can be quite hard to diagnose because every woman is different. So it, does that have an element to play or is that just actually an excuse and we need to look beyond that and work our way around that? I mean, of course, we are all different. And somebody, for example, with the case of periods and period pain, of course, there's a huge spectrum. We all know that from talking to our friends and how we sort of all cope with sort of different periods and this that, and the other. But I think the important thing, and I'd like women to feel empowered themselves to understand this when they are sitting in a patient's chair is that if it is not normal for you, then it's definitely not normal. And also nobody can tell you what is right or wrong about your body. So as I've said, it's not normal to have your quality of life affected by period pain or heavy periods um, or something like the menopause, for example. So if that is the case for you and your life, then you should be consulting a doctor and being taken seriously. Anne from Manchester, what's your views on this? Is the NHS sexist? I don't think that they're sexist, Storm. I, I think there's a lot of other like uh, equations with it. I mean, personally, me, I started my periods when I was 10 years old. And I was two weeks on and two weeks off up until um, I went on the Marina Coil when I was 25 years old. I, I, I used to have to take a day off work every month, the first day of work because I couldn't leave the bed. Um, it was really hard. But when I went to the doctors, they just said they wanted to put me on the pill. My mum said no because of our religion. And she said, that can't happen. So he said, well, there's nothing we can do. Just take painkillers and that's it. And um, then we went, I went to the hospital because it was getting really bad. It was like clots of blood, if you don't mind me saying. 
And I remember going to the hospital and the gynecologist came out to me and he's like, oh, I'm going to examine you. And he said, when was the last time you had sex? And I said, I've never had sex. And he said, well, we can't get your clothes back on, go home. We can't examine you because you, we can't, we can't touch you because you're a virgin. And so there was, he said, there's nothing we can do for you. And he that, said, just hold. Oh, that last bit sounded very odd. And Ellie, they can't examine you because you hadn't had sex before. So they can't do any investigations. That's, that, that doesn't sound right. No, that's certainly not the case. Um, there are certain types of ultrasound that are internal that are certainly um, more comfortable if you have had intercourse previously, but those ultrasounds can be done just on the tummy rather than internally. Um, and we certainly can do intimate examinations on people with care and with a chaperone, of course, and as long as the woman's comfortable, if they have never been sexually active. And I'm really, really sad to hear uh, your experience. I hope you have better experiences going forwards with um, with medical staff. Uh, Sasha from Middlesex, what's your thoughts? Is the NHS sexist? It's, it's not looking great from the stories we've heard so far. No, quite. Good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, I was at the age of 14 started my period and uh, they were awful from start. And at 18, because they'd been so bad and they were literally, I'd take, probably have a few days off a period and the rest of the time I'd be bleeding. My doctor said, um, right, we'll do some tests, but we don't think you can have children. So this is at 18. 21, I went for a pre-op to my my hysterectomy to be found out I was five weeks I was five months pregnant oh. with my first child oh my uh, well that must have been a surprise yeah it was a slight shock he even slight. He, he told me to sit down and light a cigarette and have a cup of tea because I'd need it for the shock okay, there's um, so much going on there caffeine and tobacco I feel like how long yeah. ago was this Sasha <laughs> <laughs> I have was it a doctor you were seeing or it was a doctor it was my main doctor he was but he's I'm, my eldest is now 36 years old and I went on to have a further three children. Well, Sasha, I'm, I'm delighted to hear that the first rather rash diagnosis of you may not be able to have children uh, was proven wrong. Uh, but Ellie, you actually had a, had a reaction to when you, you heard that. that. It doesn't seem appropriate for a doctor without having do, doing any sort of investigation to say, oh, I don't think you're able to have children. No, and I think, thankfully, I mean... That was, as, as um, Sasha says, 36 years ago. And I hope that we've had we've had some skills training in uh, communication skills since then in medical schools. But, you know, we are those discussions are very difficult um, for doctors and patients, um, very distressing. And we want to give our patients honesty and give them all the information and say this could be an issue um, with your condition. It could be something in the future. We obviously want to give women time to know that, but there are ways of doing that kindly and there are ways of doing that appropriately because that's obviously a huge um, piece of information um, and possibly a traumatizing piece of information, very distressing for anybody to take on board. And it has to be done in a very careful um, and very dignified way.